Hi, I'm Jeff Johnson, Director of Choral Activities at the University of Kentucky, and I'm excited to be with you for a few minutes to talk about one of my favorite types of music, Gregorian chant, or plain chant, and the medieval period. The medieval period in music, or the Middle Ages as it's sometimes called, stretches for a thousand years in our history from roughly 450 A.D. to 1450. It's a long time, a lot of years in the medieval period. The music of that period was largely associated with religion, so its uh, purpose was ceremonial. And the religion that was predominant in Europe during that time was Catholicism. So we're going to talk about religious music of the medieval period. That means music of the Catholic Church, and it means Gregorian chant. Gregorian chant was always sung in Latin, and interestingly enough, it was always sung by monks or priests or clerics associated with the church. The chant that we're going to be discussing today and that we're going to be performing today is called Alma Redemptoris Mater. That's Latin for Loving Mother of the Redeemer. The translation of the chant is Loving Mother of the Redeemer, who remains the accessible gateway of heaven and star of the sea, give aid to a falling people that strives to rise. Remember that this chant was always sung in Latin and always sung by monks. So we have our UK singers today impersonating the monks from the Middle Ages. I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes about some of the elements of music as they relate to Gregorian chant. Now the main thing about Gregorian chant is it's all unison or monophony. There's only one part going on. There's no harmony, there are no chords, it's just one melody. And everybody sings that melody together. All the men, all the monks would sing that melody together. So melody is a really important element of Gregorian chant. Harmony doesn't exist in Gregorian chant. One of the things that you'll notice when you look at the music of Gregorian chant, first of all, it doesn't look like what we would call notes. It doesn't look like modern notation. We only have two types of notes in Gregorian chant, basically long notes and notes that are half that long. In the modern notation, you'll see quarter notes and eighth notes. Those are the only types of notes that are used in this chant and in most Gregorian chant. But what's interesting is that the rhythm is free. In other words, there are no bar lines and there's no meter like 4-4 four, four time or 3-4 time. It's, there's no time signature, no bar lines, and so it flows without ever having moments where we, uh, we have regular downbeats. There are no regular accents in this music. There are three different ways that chant was performed and, and still is in parts of Europe. Uh, the first way is called direct. In a direct uh, performance of chant, everybody sings everything. All the monks together sing all the notes together. So the next way is antiphonal. An antiphonal is when we divide the monks in half and we have this half sing a line and then we have this half sing a line. And then the third way is responsorial. In responsorial, we have a soloist who sings a line of the chant or a phrase of the chant, and then everybody else sings a phrase after them. 
Now that might sound familiar to you because that is like call and response. Now, let's talk about another element of music, timbre. Looks like timbre, pronounced timbre, right? And it means tone color, as you probably know. Now, what do you think the tone color of Gregorian chant would be? Yes, the color of the human voice, because it is all voices, no instruments ever. And it's the color of the male voice. Also, our singers in Gregorian chant are trying to unify their sound, to sound like one voice. That's very important. It adds to the, the uh, serious or sacred nature of the music. And remember, this is ceremonial music for the Catholic Church. Finally, dynamics. Let's talk about that for a second. We don't see any pianos, we don't see any fortes, mezzo piano, mezzo forte. We don't see any of those dynamic markings about louds and softs in this music. But as you heard in the performance, there were some moments that were louder than others and softer than others. So what that, what that means is as the lines rise or as the notes get higher, the voices get louder automatically, just naturally. And as the line falls, or the notes get lower, then the, note, the voices get softer. So we do have dynamics in this music, we just don't have the little markings to tell us. So we just follow the contour or the shape of the melody, and that determines how loud or soft we are. So, in conclusion, we're going to perform the entire plain chant, or Gregorian chant, Alma Redemptoris Mater, with our ensemble of male singers, and we're going to use the responsorial method. We hope you enjoy this chant. Oh. 